One of the often ignored workhorse of World War II was the M8 Greyhound, seen in almost every war movie, but usually overshadowed by the Sherman tanks and sleek fighter planes, but nonetheless it did its part to win the war in Europe. As usual, first we will look at the origins of its development. The original specification for these vehicles were laid out in 1941 as a light rear tank destroyer to replace the M6 gun motor carriage. The requirements were a 6x4 drive vehicle armed with the 37mm gun, which in the early years of the war seemed adequate, a coaxial and a hull-mounted machine gun. Its armor had to be strong enough to withstand 50 caliber machine gun fire. As it happened many times during the war, by the time it entered development, its original concept became obsolete. The 37mm gun was not powerful enough anymore to fill the tank destroyer role. However, in the early stages of World War II, American planners observed how Germany used their forces as combined arms to conquer other countries. Key part of their success was light reconnaissance units collecting intelligence moving in front of the main forces. Based on these observations, the specification for the M8 were changed to light armored car and it was meant to be used as a light reconnaissance vehicle. Now let's move to design and development. Three prototypes were submitted by Studebaker, Ford and Chrysler, named T21, 22 and 23. From these, the Chrysler and Ford versions were developed further and ultimately the Ford vehicle won out. It was built on a 6x6 chassis, mounted the 37mm gun and a hull mounted machine gun, though several design changes were implemented before serial production, like removal of the hull machine gun and other small changes. The prototype T22E2 was ready in early 1942 and received its formal designation Light Armored Car M8 in May the same year. But the first production vehicle only left the manufacturing plant in March 1943, with the first unit supplied to the army in November. The name Greyhound actually came from the British, who also received the M8, but they felt it was too thinly armored, so it see little action, mostly used in the Italian campaign at the end of the war. The M8 has a distinctive shape thanks to the well sloped armor and its six wheels, making it easily recognizable between World War II vehicles. They were all equipped with long-range radios to communicate with headquarters and short-range radios to communicate with other vehicles. Now let's move on to the armament. The M8 mounted the 37mm M6 gun, a coaxial 30 caliber machine gun and an anti-aircraft 50 caliber machine gun. The armament was perfectly capable of dealing with infantry and enemy light vehicles, but if the M8 encountered heavy enemy armor, it used its low profile and quiet engine to stay concealed or its speed to break away from combat situations. Armor On the hull it had 12 to 19 mm of armor on the front and 9.5 mm on the side. The turret had 19 mm all around. The vehicle's armor was very thin and only provided protection to small arms fire. Especially problematic was the floor, which was only 6 mm thick and made it vulnerable to landmines. Later models received added floor armor to address this problem, but the added weight resulted in modifications needed on the suspension as well. Power plant and performance The M8 had a Hercules GXD 6 cylinder engine producing 110 horsepower. The maximum speed was 55 miles an hour on roads and 30 miles an hour off road. The engine was well light for its quiet operation and under normal circumstances it was powerful enough, but in the Italian mountains or the deep snow in the Ardennes it proved to be underpowered. M8 variants and production numbers T22, the first prototype M8 E1 with the modified suspension M20 armored car this had the turret removed altogether and only retained the 50 caliber machine gun as armament. T69 multiple gun carriage prototype. In 1943, a prototype was tested, equipped with four 50 caliber machine guns as an anti aircraft vehicle, but it was never got into production. Some interesting variants from after World War II M8 Tow tank destroyer. The main gun was removed and replaced with a tow missile launcher. M8 H90. This was a French variant equipped with a 90mm gun. In total, between 1943 and 1945, more than 12,000 M8 and M20 armored cars were manufactured. Combat history The M8 entered service in the Sicily campaign in 1943 and saw use by the US Army in Italy and Western Europe. It was also deployed to the Pacific and used in Okinawa and the Philippines, and in this theater it was even used in its original tank destroyer role against the thinly armored Japanese tanks. In general, its performance has very deep use, as though it was fast enough on roads, 
of road capabilities were lacking. On rough terrain or in deep snow, it was confined to using roads, making it less usable as a reconnaissance vehicle. After World War II After the war, as the army downsized, many M8 and M20 armored cars were donated or sold to other countries. The ones that remained in US service were used in the Korean War as well, mainly as military police vehicles, but after the Korean War, they were deemed obsolete and got decommissioned. Most of them were given to friendly countries, and some of them were purchased by different police organizations as riot control vehicles. After the war in Europe, France were the biggest user of the M8 cars, and with various modifications, used some of them up until 1975. The M8 is still in use in several smaller countries up to this day. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and in the comments let me know if there's any interesting events or vehicles you'd like to see.